Okay. Do good, do great, and they talk bad on No need, no face, cause they're not factual. No, no, no. I won't stay too long here, I'm just passing through. I might hit the bank and get a bag or two. My mama asked me why you got that cash room. Second you switch up, they might get mad at you. No, you're not my friend, so no, I'm taxing you. You all like my sons, I'm going dad on you. Good job, get my no problem. Hit my line, you're irking me. I hit that woo side. No, I don't got perks on me. I sleep good on God. Spend that money, make it reappear. Ta da!
right, all right. What is going on, people? It's Thanksgiving's, man, weekend. What's going on? Um, I wanted to do this live stream because it's uh, an add-on to what Erica did about PayPal and merchant accounts. Uh, I have been a pure internet business for the last 11 years. Before that, I used eBay, Amazon, and some other platforms which were not mine, but I've been selling online about 20 years. And one thing I want to make you guys aware of, also, before we get into all that, I'm not doing traditional Black Friday stuff. I'm doing it at Hustlers Kung Fu. If you're on the email list, I've sent out 50% offers on Hustlers Kung Fu stuff. I will send that out. I would put that out. And I'll put that below in the description after the live stream. So this is the offer that I'm making, which expires December 1st. If you buy the corporate toolbox and you pay in full, you get a year of consulting. You get 12 months of consulting. This is the only offer. We're not going back because you guys who got in cheap, you're getting a lot of stuff because I'm getting ready to add some more training like wealth habits this is going to be a new course if you are a member of the corporate toolbox you're going to get it you don't have to do anything also if you're a member of a corporate toolbox and you're on the payment plan and you find you can't log in it means your payment failed <laughs> i got like two emails this morning it's like i was trying to log in and i go look see the way the system is designed if you your payment fails you can't log in you you, you get kicked out the course so if you're finding yourself Hey, I can't get in. I am not seeing anything. Your payment failed. So you need to go ahead and we, we have to redo all that. But that that happened this weekend because it, it was hilarious. I was like, well, yeah, you ain't paying, man. You know, you go to a restaurant and you don't pay. You don't eat. That's how it goes. So but for anyone who goes ahead this weekend, Black Friday enhancement, you will get a year of consulting. We will talk once a month about your business and things you want to do starting December. This is going on. Links are below. I got a lot of people who are calling up and asking, like, how do I get the Black Friday special of the corporate toolbox? I've been telling people for months there was not going to be a Black Friday special. I've had people hop in the corporate toolbox September, October, November. Then all of a sudden, I'm going to do a 50% off discount. What's going to happen is these people are like, hey, man, can I get a discount too? So I would have to lose money to go ahead and do these deals. And uh, people have been signing up for the corporate toolbox. So I'm not doing that. I will do a Black Friday enhancement. I want to add more stuff to the corporate toolbox but we ain't going to do no 50% off. Now, there's some 50% off offers at HustlersKungFuLifeSkills.com. All right. So just to get into it, I've been selling online about 20 years. And I've anything that can happen, uh, one of the things that happened to Erica happened to me with eBay. And I'm going to tell you exactly how it happened. Uh, I bought a unit that had a bunch of antique dolls in it. And my... PayPal volume went from like four to five thousand a week to twenty thousand a week. Bam! They locked up my money. Uh, eBay canceled my account. I didn't do nothing wrong. See, you got to understand how PayPal works, and this is something that is in the corporate toolbox. Things you need to do so this does not happen to you, because essentially, y'all don't know. I started a new PayPal account and. It happened with the new PayPal account. So there, there's things you have to do to prevent this. Now, I want to clear up some stuff about the merchant account. Uh, before I came online, I had a warehouse. I had two stores. I had merchant accounts. Let me be 100% clear with you. If you do not underwrite your merchant account correctly, the same thing will happen. Uh, I was selling the warehouse and this girl, she was cute as all the day gets out. And I just signed up for a second the merchant account because they offered a loan against your account receivables. And I was like, oh, this is cool. And I told him the average ticket was going to be 500 bucks. This is what this is how my merchant account credit app was scored. So once again, I'm about to give you guys some game because if you do 
the merchant account the wrong way, the same exact thing that will happen with PayPal, will happen with Stripe, will happen with a merchant account, except it will happen faster. So um, I completely didn't know this at the time, right? So what I did is I had two merchant accounts. I had one merchant account through the Bank of America that was pretty much unlimited. We can run whatever we wanted through it, never had a problem. But Bank of America did not offer the loan. But this credit merchant offered the loan. So I, was the time, was selling new furniture. I started running four and five and 6,000 charges through this new account. Within two days, clink, clink, locked up. Locked up, shut me down, refused to accept any new charges. So this whole thing of getting the merchant account that someone's going to fight, it ain't true. It ain't true. Merchant accounts can be sometimes worse than PayPal. PayPal, Stripe, merchant accounts, you've got to know how to work them because they will all do the same thing if you go past certain thresholds with them. Like I learned years and years ago with these two merchant accounts. I was just like, what? And fortunately, they allowed me to do refunds. So I refunded the money and I was able to sweet talk these people into paying on the new merchant account. So we were able to keep going. And th this is something else. If you have PayPal, if you have Stripe, you should have PayPal and Stripe. Or perhaps you may should even have a merchant account. Now, one of the things that's kind of funky with getting your own merchant accounts and gateways is a lot of think of it um teachable they don't work that well with these external gateways because you got to hire a developer to create some code to make sure that the teachable think of a site is talking to your merchant account so you're going to have to do some extra steps but once again do not think just because you got a merchant account that this will not happen to you i'm here to tell you it can and will so if you are setting up a merchant account you need to go for the highest ticket the highest ticket that you can go if you feel that you're going to be selling a ten thousand dollar product or a fifteen thousand dollar product at some point in the future that's how your credit app needs to be scored because if you tell them 500 then you start running a bunch of thousand dollar charges through there clink clink they're going to lock you down they're going to lock you down so essentially this is one of the things that i do in the corporate toolbox is to tell you how to set these things up to avoid shutdowns because uh, I've never I've never had an issue with my Stripe account. Now, this is what Stripe will do. If Stripe has got a problem with your business model, they're going to send you an email and tell you that they're not going to process any more charges and give you five days to find another processor. That's typically what Stripe Stripe doesn't typically hold your money. They will tell you that there's an issue, there's a problem, and they will stop running process, which I feel is much better. PayPal. I have three PayPal accounts and I have two that I've had no issues with because I knew how to acclimate my PayPal accounts. Because like I said, uh, I don't know what happened with Erica. We haven't talked, but I'm going to assume that she had a sudden increase in volume and that's why the clink clink or there's another thing that happens that no one ever tells you. You got what's called an internal chargeback scoring ratio. Like with B-School for Hustlers, I've had two chargebacks and they were fraud, right? Fraud doesn't really count against you because there's nothing you can do. But if you get like if you have 100 sales and you get 10 chargebacks, clank, clank, they're going to shut you down. That, that your ratio, you've exceeded your chargeback ratio. And this is one of the things that has happened in the online course spell because a lot of people are selling their course too hard. Like with the corporate toolbox, I tell you, it's going to be two to three years before you roll out. So people are coming in and they're not they're having an understanding that they're not going to be making immediately. You know, it's how you sell your product, because with PayPal, Stripe, even the merchant account, if you exceed your charge pack threshold, they will shut you down. All of them are geared the same way. They will shut you down. In my opinion, neither one is any better than the other. It's just how you use these accounts let's see uh what the heck ah there we go so you you got to be really really careful because uh one of the things 
that is happening is that so many people are trying to run to the online space and they don't understand that running an online business is the same as running a regular business. All right, I'm going to get into that, December Barone. I'm going to get into that. Wayman Brown making that money, driving for dollars, driving for dollars. I'm going to get into that. I'm going to get into that. All right, all right. Hey, once again, the people will be like, hey, I can't get in. Hey, you know, a lot of people still sign up at 150 and 500 because they're shorter terms. Oh, yeah, I'm going to actually put some more stuff in there. I'm going to get even a little bit more because essentially, whether it's PayPal, Stripe or a merchant account, you have to treat them the same way because with a merchant account, it all starts with your initial application and the information that you give them. And, and you know, if you got a merchant account and you feel that your business model is about to change, you need to call them up and like, hey, uh, I'm about to start doing much higher charges. Could you rescore my app? Because if you do not, they will shut you down. Because here's the thing. These merchant accounts stripe all of these accounts they know how much people make they're like the bank they know how much people make per industry they they have really good internal information like what happened with me with the ebay account we were doing like four to five thousand a week and then we went to twenty thousand a week in like seven and i got an email from paypal and i got an email from ebay i didn't pay them any attention seven days later clank clank we were locked up and they held $31,000 to 18 months until I got an attorney. I mean, you know, um, Square, once again, if you get a lot of chargebacks, one of the things is chargebacks. Chargebacks are a problem. Um, many online course creators have exceptionally char high chargebacks. A lot of these guys who sell these scam courses so that they have to go to these high risk processors like CB, CC bill or something like that. But if you get a lot of chargebacks, game over. All right, jukebox helper. Uh, I don't really have a lot of fraud. I don't, my two chargebacks were fraud and they were like, one was for like 179, one was for a hundred bucks. No worries on that. So typically, all right, all right. So one of the things is you, you got to be really careful, really, really careful with, because uh, in the corporate toolbox, I give you the tools because essentially I teach you how to set this stuff up. I teach you what to do if you run into a problem. Because one of the things is, and let's get about the truth of running an online business. I've been doing this 11 years. I've been making six to seven figures for 11 years. So I know a thing or two about an online business. And the number one thing that many of you have got messed up, you got the game twisted, is you think you can come online and work less than you do with a regular business. Simply not true. In, in the beginning, you're going to work harder on your online business than you will with, work with a regular business. Like, let me give you an example of what we did. We, we had two storefronts and a warehouse. So we had three properties. And one day I was sitting down and I realized that most of our store traffic came from Craigslist. We were making a lot of our sales from Craigslist. And I, I went to my partner and I said, like, you know what, let's just shut Because I hated sitting in the store just waiting for people to show up. I hated that. It was just, 
you know, it was it was torture to me just sitting in the store waiting for people to show up because like I like running the Craigslist ads and then people calling, people coming by and it's like it's, it's on and popping. It's on and popping. That, I love that action. But just sitting around for two to three hours, no one comes in the store. And then we had an issue with code enforcement because for us to get traffic in the store, we had to put stuff outside the store in the parking lot. And code enforcement was like, you can't do that. Because essentially one time we had one of our best sales days in the store. We essentially put a ton of stuff in the parking lot and people were stopping. They were looking, they were buying and code enforcement was like, ah, ah, click, 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 click. No, you can't do that. And code enforcement would remove your signs. I mean, it was just like, why do you hate me so much, code enforcement? I mean, it was like. They didn't want you to make money in DeKalb County. It was, it was crazy. And then after the cold enforcement battles, after all of the stuff and the rent for the retail space was twice as what, well, one retail space we had was like a thousand square feet. And that was twice the rent of our 10,000 square foot warehouse, two times. So I was just like, let's just go ahead, break these leases. Let's get out of it. We broke the leases, we moved out and we moved everything to hold on we moved everything to an online platform and we saw our revenues 5x because keeping a store and there are many of you who want to own a store and have retail running retail is a different kind of animal it is a different kind of animal because the thing is, when you run retail, you got to freshen up your store. You got to be there. You got it's just it's an additional thing. And when we moved everything to the warehouse that disappeared. We just had to worry about online sales. So we started. Uh, I started listing way more on Craigslist. I started listing way more on eBay. I started listing way more on Amazon sales 5x. And then we got rid of eight thousand dollars in expenses and our sales went up. And this is why if you go back to my earlier videos, I'll tell you, don't start a storefront, start a website, get your warehouse, start selling online. I, I've, I've been talking about that for years because once again, many people feel that an online business is easier. An online business is not easier. It is because you can scale differently. You know, if you put proper business protocols into your business, you can scale very, very fast with an online business. Like, you know, essentially we shut down. We saw a 5X increase in our revenues in like two months. It was just like, boom, just like that. Boom, like that. But we were running a real business. And this is the thing that so many people that don't understand, because essentially I'm going to tell you a lot of these, quote, internet scam hacks or business models are not durable. They're not going to hold up to term. They're just not. All right. Thank you, Rod. Clink, clink. Hey, man. I mean, there ain't nothing because I know how Erica feels because you get that email and then e PayPal's like, we're not going to accept any more charges. We're going to hold your money. You feel like what? Why are you doing? Why do you hate me like this? I ain't do nothing to you. I mean, it, it just sucks. It just sucks. And it, it, it's very you feel unempowered. You feel helpless because essentially they're like, there ain't nothing you can do. Once they do this, there ain't nothing you can do. It is a horrible, horrible, horrible feeling. And for the longest, I stayed away from PayPal. If you go back on this channel, I got videos that say don't use PayPal. For this very reason right here, then PayPal got sued so many times that they don't really do that unless they have, you know, you got chargebacks, they can get away with it. If you get like essentially this is one of the things that was kind of happening for me. I had people who were on the payment plan and they would get tired of paying. Then they would say fraud. Now, fraud doesn't really count against you. Also. I have won 90% of my PayPal disputes because, you know, I get people in there. They want to go fraud because like the last one that was fraud, I was like, you know, it's very interesting. 
This person has been allowing their credit card to be charged for 12 months. Now, all of a sudden, it's fraud. And then I also, when people log into my website, I have IP addresses and I send all the stuff in there and they turn down his charge back and I got to keep the money. I've won 90% because essentially um, going ahead and talking to the person is pointless. They're already trying to get out of an obligation with a scammy way versus just like emailing like, hey, I want to. They, they don't do that. They, they always go for the scam way to get out of it. And I will actually I had someone who tried to do a few years ago a fifteen hundred dollar charge back on me. And uh, this is when I had Patty and he called and he screamed at Patty. Right. So I was like, that's good. That's good. She's like, he, he got on my I said, no, no, we're going to call the police. So we, we called the police and we sent him a recording of us calling the police. That charge back disappeared real quick, real quick. So one of the things. Uh, Steve Jamie, when I ran the Oakley store in Linux, there's a provision at least where you have to renovate the store at least every two years. More overhead, more overhead, more like like I said. Do not ever start a retail storefront without a strong Internet backbone today. You know, retail like, you know, Ty Lopez and his partners, they're buying all of these retail outlets. That's a whole different game. That's a whole different game. And what they're doing, they're taking these old. These brick and mortar boards online, a whole different game. So once again, starting an online business, you need to have your own website. You need to. And also, this is something else, too. For those of you who are like waiting for the paid traffic course, most of you don't have your website set up, set up correctly. You don't have a privacy statement. You don't have these are things you're going to need when you start running paid traffic. It gets way complicated when you start. running. It's more than just putting up an ad. You're going to have a privacy statement. You're going to have to have a website that you own and control. I think one of the worst things in the world is to run paid traffic to a platform. You know, that, that that's crazy. That is crazy. So one of the things is you got to treat your online business as if it's a real business. Once again, I've been doing this 11 years. That ain't no accident. I got the receipts. I've been making more money each year because essentially one of the scams that happens is people will tell you, hey, you know, sign up for my offer. You don't need an email list. I want you to think everything that every site that you buy something on, whether it's Yeti, Amazon, how many emails you get from these companies? They load you up with emails. You know why? Because the more emails you send, the more money you make. I'm going to send some emails today and I'm going to make some money. They will tell you, you don't need an email list. You don't need an audience. You can make all of this money just from your good looks and beautiful, brilliant white smile. Now, these are what I call Internet hacks or, you know, like um, one of the things is that this this is something this is one of the reasons I got rid of Gumroad. I used to use Gumroad a lot. And essentially, you want to have a website that you can control everything on that website. You want 100 percent control, because if you do not have control, you're going to run into some issues. You're going to run into a lot of issues and you need to go out and the, the rules of business don't change because it's an online business. This is one of the things that is killing people. They're going ahead. They're throwing up a Rudy Poot website and they're running traffic to it. And they're like, how come I'm not making any money? Because you're not running the real business. You're going to have to. Some people feel starting to so front without marketing as someone just find you out the blue. Yeah, man. Like running a retail storefront is hard. It is hard. And also the rent can be stupid. I mean, we were paying thirty five hundred thousand thirty five hundred dollars a month, 40 K a year for a thousand square feet. And we were paying um, forty eight hundred 
for another space in Stone Mountain that it, it, that they were both problematic because the way that we were getting customers in those storefronts was through Craigslist marketing. And it was frustrating. It was really, really frustrating. And I was just like, one day I was just, I had enough. Because one day I sat in the Soul Mountain store. It was a day that all the auctions got canceled. And I sat in that store for about 12 hours and I made maybe 200 bucks. And I was just like, this ain't the business, man. This ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. Uh, same principles apply to any business. First thing you need is a marketplace. And I have some people who are asking me, what is a marketplace? I am a member of a marketplace. You are a member of a marketplace. Everyone's a member of many different marketplaces. I shop a lot on Etsy. I shop on Amazon. I shop on the Apple store. I am a member of those marketplaces in those social economic ecologies. And you are too. And one of the things is like, let's go ahead and talk about me and Apple. iPhone 12. I Mac, uh, MacBook Pro. I got another MacBook Pro. Now, why does Apple have me in their ecosystem? Because of the iCloud. Because from what I do, it makes what I do easier. And if I was to switch to an IBM compatible, then I would have to create all of these little hacks and things that will be crazy. Uh, my mother bought a storefront with an apartment on top of the store on the store. She's paid the building off. Sometimes she gets no customers, but her tenants pay her 2K a month. Hey, that's a winning ticket. If you can get a building with apartments where you can get revenue and, you know, it makes the storefront much easier so that your mother was really smart with that. Steve Jamin, retail stores are hard work. The malls will find you if you open late or if no one's in the store for more than 30 minutes. The security guards will walk around to check your store being open. Man, retail is a different animal. And, you know, this is why I'm like, you know, you got to go online. <laughs> the computer is the smartest person I know. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations. Because essentially, this is one of the reasons that like, I saw this channel beat the bush. And this, this is another reason that people fail with online businesses. Beat the bush is getting ready to stop making YouTube videos because it feels like work. He's like, he's like it's not like I, I enjoy doing this. He's getting ready to kill a lot of money. Because he doesn't want to work. So let's talk about this. There are many people, as long as it's a hobby, it's fun, they don't feel an obligation to do it. All right, let, let me go ahead and whisper in your ear. If you want to make money, you need to go to work. Because when I saw this video and people like, you know, because essentially so many people, unless this excites them or makes them really happy, they're out. And this ain't going to cut it. Like when I first started on YouTube, let me tell you my YouTube process. This was long before I got the IMAX and all the fancy cameras and the mics and stuff. I had a Toshiba satellite. And what this sucker would do would get so hot that the fans would kick on and it would. <laughs> boom, and it would be like this ping and it would cut off. Right. And I would have to wait until it cooled off to finish doing my videos. It took me between filming, editing, 8 to 12 hours to put up one video. It was a procedure. I went through that for six months. Then I, I was like, all right, I'm getting me a Mac. And I got my first iMac off of Craigslist. And then all that problems went away. See, there, there's an evolution and there's a journey. So one of the things is that so many people want to treat an online business as if it's a hobby. Once again, YouTube was a rough for me in the beginning. I didn't treat it as a hobby. I've treated YouTube since day one as a business. It's a business. Whether I feel like making videos, like right now, uh, I'm actually 
pushing myself because my editors have three videos and these videos will be done Monday, right? I'm going to make some more videos and I, I got one of them loaded up and I'm going to have two more videos done this weekend before my editors get finish those two. So I will be ahead and I'm going to get to the point where I'm going to be nine to 12 videos ahead because essentially um, sometimes it can be a bear like oh, I got to make three videos today. And like, you know, I've given myself time off, like I'm not working out. I've been eating. I've been enjoying myself. I've been having a good time because it's Thanksgiving's man. And I've been letting my hair back and enjoying myself. But one of the things that you have to do is treat your online business as if it's a real business. And this is one of the things because many people have the false notion that they can come online and do little or nothing and make a lot of money. Let me show y'all something. All right. I got my glasses on, so the face ID does not work. So I got to put the password in. All right. Let me go ahead. Actually. All right. I keep talking about this. This was $112,000, right? I have no car payments. I have no notes. How did I get that car? Work. I did not like, like I said, right now it's Saturday, you know, also thanks to alternate day fasting, which gives me crazy energy. Uh, I did a video on Savage Finance. I'm doing this video here, probably going to drop some more tomorrow. I work. And this is one of the reasons that so many people who have an online business don't make any money. They don't want to work. Or in some cases, they don't know how to work. They don't know how to work. Marketplaces are all the hype today in the SNA space is crazy as hell. But from my experience going through it now, it's a lot harder to build in a traditional. E oh, yeah. Selling an intangible is dramatically harder than selling this cup. This cup. You know what it does? It keeps your beverages cool. Real easy sell. When you sell an intangible. A lot of people, Mac Ultra, don't want to work. You don't want to work. Jukebox Hero. I feel that people are like that because they listen to Bozos who's never started a business saying you need to turn what makes you happy into a business regardless if there's a market. There's some truth to that because let's go ahead and look at what I do. I do YouTube and I create online courses. What are those? They're communication. I love communication. Uh, as a kid, I read 4,000 books while I was in high school. And I know because I count it. I read 4,000 books. So I love reading. I love communicating. And this is what YouTube is. It's communication. So I'm doing a business that's in alignment with my core strengths in something I love to do, which is why I've been able to do this for 11 years. I can do this until I'm 80. But once again, so many people, here's something else too, and let's have this conversation. There are many people out there who have not built themselves. And what I mean by that is they have no hobbies, they have no passions, they don't, they just are sucking up oxygen. There's nothing remarkable or special about them. And then they come to the internet and they want to create a business, and everyone wants to be, quote, a YouTuber or everyone wants to have a lit Instagram page. And I'm here to tell you, I know a chick. Actually, we kind of dating. She has an Instagram page, right? And I was out with her and she took a picture. She took this picture 50 times. And she was like, look, look, how's this one look? How's this one look? 
She actually took that picture 50 times to get the right shot, the right angle for one Instagram post. 50 times. How many of you are going to take a picture for 50 times to do one Instagram post? See, this, this is the thing that you don't understand about successful YouTubers. Um, I, since I'm in a YouTube mastermind, I know people who have shot videos over three and four times. I know people who will obsess over a thumbnail. They would do, they were running three, four, five, six, seven thumbnails on a video. These people work. They work, man. And a lot of folks don't know how to work. You have to continue to warrior business just like grandma on the water or garden? Absolutely. Rock and roller. How do you decide if a business is worth getting into? What are the things you look for? Interestingly enough, I don't really decide if a business is working well worth getting into without doing some some exam experiments. See, you cannot just be over here. It's like I'm going to get in that business and I, you know it's going to work out. Let's talk about the corporate toolbox. How did I know that that was going to work? I have several holding company videos on this channel and they've all done really well. And I've noticed that nobody on YouTube was talking about it. So I created the content. I got the feedback that the content was desirable. And then I created a business around it. See, th this is one of the things, rock and roller. You got to do. You got to do tiny little experiments. And this is one of the things that for me, I... I have a scientific background. I'm used to running experiments. I used to work in the lab. And it's for me, it's kind of hard for people to understand. Is to understand why so many people are afraid to try. This hands down is one of the biggest reasons that so many people don't enjoy success. They will not try because they feel like, well, if I try, I'm going to fail. Actually, you're going to learn something you didn't know. Uh, drop shipping will work, but once again, let's talk about drop shipping. I have a friend who does drop shipping, but he has American suppliers. He has contracts with these companies and it, it works out, but it took him years to get it all dialed in. You can't paint your own picture while working that paintbrush. Pretty much, pretty much. Business is king. <laughs> Turkey's turkey that uh, turkey talk, man. A uh, turkey talk. It's also because you have to solve the chicken and egg problem. Marketplaces are two sided problems. There's just something you don't face for traditional e commerce. Traditional e commerce is cup. Oh, I want cool beverage. I'm gonna buy a Yeti cup. Boom. That there you go. So it's it's a totally different game. Uh, Zealous one, taking the time to get to know yourself is key to being successful. That's why a lot of businesses do not work. I would say that's true. All right, LP, got the 5K divvy. Congratulations. Can't be afraid to fail. There's a lesson in failure. Beat the bush to have staff at this point. It took over 70K in training last year. So grateful it taught me more systems and how to hire staff. See, Erica, th th this is one of the things. Uh, right now, I have my uh, assistant contacting other students, YouTubers, because we want to do marketing, right? Most YouTubers are not business people. 99% of YouTubers, even, you know, the really successful ones who get pro uh, pitched offers and stuff. Okay. But 90% they they just like, I remember we sent someone something and he said, I don't do that. I don't do that. A lot of these people do not fully understand the power of YouTube. They have no clue. And, you know, it, it's frustrating. A lot of these people you're trying to, they, they have no way you can contact them. Because they essentially want to make the YouTube money. Like, I make $9,000 a month from YouTube between my assets, right? I do well over 200 k selling something. But they don't understand that 
you need to treat this as a business. I treat YouTube as a business. I'm getting ready to do some stuff next year. I'm getting ready to launch some other stuff. The mastermind, we're getting ready to put some stuff together. And once again, this is why so many people who start online businesses don't win because they don't treat them like businesses. I remember years ago, I had a um, rake and profit in um, God, what's his name? He's the Amazon guy. I could see his face. And they were talking about me and I was just saying, you need to go ahead and develop an audience or a marketplace. Then you need to find out what this marketplace wants and then you need to create it and sell it to them. And they were like, you don't need to do that with eBay and Amazon. They have all of this traffic. And what has happened to Amazon? A lot of long term Amazon sellers are now having to run ads to get more sales. But I ain't know nothing. I ain't know nothing. You know, I'm just talking about pure business principles. First of all, you find the marketplace. Then you find out what that marketplace wants. Then you make it and sell it to them. But this is most people just like I have this cup for sale. And then they go out and try to sell this car, this cup. And they don't know if the audience wants it. Like I said, when I create the like I used to do this all the time. I used to create products and services. And I, I did no testing or experiments and they would just fail, just stink, just stink up the place. And then once I started to conduct tiny experiments, i.e. the holding company videos, then I created products based upon the successful videos. My money start. Started making money like crazy. I started making money like crazy. Once again, look at what I did. When COVID started, what did I do? I started making more content. I did not sit and bemoan and whine and cry and go like, oh, no. I was like, this, this is an opportunity. This is an opportunity. You know, one of the things is that so many people want to come online like, all right. I had 10 years of resale experience. Now, what does that look like? I had experience running two storefronts. I had experience running ads. I had experience selling customers. I had experience acquiring product. I had, I had to put systems and processes together. So when I came to YouTube, I did not come to YouTube because, you know, I used to go to um, Vid Summit and just clown on these folks because they would show me they were making like two to four thousand dollars a month ad sense. Then I was like, I'm making fifty thousand dollars a month selling my course. And I would try to indoctrinate and bring these people into the fold. And they were so resistant because they don't want to do any more than what they're doing. So I came to YouTube as a skilled business operator. I knew how to acquire product at rock bottom prices. I knew how to move product. I knew how to run a warehouse. I knew how to hire people. I, had, I came to YouTube with a lot of valuable business skills that the average YouTuber doesn't have. I mean, I'm making more money than YouTubers with a million or two million subscribers. Easy. I got a friend. He, he gets like two million views a month. His AdSense is the exact same as mine, 9,000. And I only get 200 between uh, two channels, only getting like 225,000 views. If I was to get a million views, I would be making 50, 60,000. They want YouTube AdSense, but you treat it like a business. You get 10X out. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. This is one of the things I'd be screaming. But they don't want to, they lazy. They don't want to do it. Oh, Rakin is in um, the Click Funnels course right now. He's in, he's, he took the one funnel challenge away and he's running ads. It's very funny that he's running ads because he and Chris Green, Rakin Profit and Chris Green, they were talking smack about me. Now, here it is many la years later, they're doing exactly what I told they monkey asses to do back then. It's funny. Thank you, Erica, for letting me know that. It's real interesting. Real interesting. 
The most difficult aspect of online business is not having a blueprint to follow and no close friends or family who understand businesses. Uh, this would be most people. I would I would say that that that's a valid point. I studied Etsy for six months, watched every video on Etsy and digital downloads. This is what you got to do, the the beauty. This is what you got to do. You got to study what you want to get into. I was talking to a friend last night. She said she wants to be an influencer. I asked her who was her audience. She didn't know. Ooh, da -dum, da -dum. that ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to work, man. That ain't going to work. Just want to be paid to be themselves. Exactly. Remember, most of them are creators or creatives, so they want to be in the art side, not the business side. Uh, most of them are lazy. I know a lot of them. I know a lot of them. Most of them are just lazy because here's the thing with YouTube. YouTube is a beautiful thing that you can wake up, hold a camera in front of your face and talk about what you had for breakfast and make money. YouTube has handcuffed a lot of these people because they're a lot of them are not really creative. They're personalities like take Graham Stevens. His you know, he got into the YouTube algorithm really hot and heavy, but a lot of his advice is not going to do jack for you. People just like him. People just like him. They just like him. Because essentially, and this is me, you know, because I'm in this space and I know what it takes to make money. I know how to manage money. I know how to create revenue streams. I actually know how to do this. And there are many folks on YouTube who talk about true business principles and things you need to do. And they just don't get the views like Omni and the Hellcat. He did a live stream because he's giving away a house and a car. And there is Thirst Nation. These people who are waiting for someone to come save them. Jukebox. A lot of these critters are just rip off of others. They see PewDiePie making money with gaming. They think he can do it too much without understanding what goes into it. 100% true. Because, like I said, if you start an online business, the same business principles that go into you having an offline business are the same. It doesn't change. And I've tried to tell people this because essentially when I was selling my first digital product, I had so many people come at me like, hey, Glendon, I need um, to do this. I need to be making 9000 a month. I don't want to. I'm, I'm just completely unrealistic, completely unrealistic. When I started this YouTube channel, and I don't think I put this out in the video, I had 300K in the bank when I started this YouTube channel. So I had runway. I didn't have to worry about bills. I didn't have to worry about a car payment. I didn't have to worry about anything. I had 300K in the bank and I was able to sit here and do this. And I started making money six months after I got on the platform. Six months. Uh, Crystal, this isn't true. Plus, it's difficult to stay motivated to make videos when you're not getting paid to do in the videos. Uh, my first year and a half, my YouTube channel was not monetized. Let me tell you what kept me motivated. I had a blog, urbanpackrat.com, and I was getting 10 to 15 hits per day. Then I started doing YouTube and I started directing traffic from YouTube to the blog and I went up to 300, 500, 600 hits a day. I still wasn't making no money. I still wasn't making no money. I did not make money from YouTube or anything for six months. This is something that happens with business. You may start a business and you may work for six, you know, and six months was quick. But once again, I picked business models where I could make money quickly. Like when I got into reselling used office furniture, I made money my first day in that business. So there are some businesses that you can make money like a service business. You can start a service business at nine in the morning and by 5 p.m. that day you've made some money. You can do that. Barry Skywalker, how do you develop an audience? First thing is, like, let's go ahead and talk about what happened with me when I came on here. I was talking about storage auctions. When I came on the YouTube platform, there was Dan Dotson and maybe 
10 other people talking about resale. It was wide open. And I knew that once I started telling the stories of what I got out of these storage units, I would develop an audience. So one of the things is you got to create content. You got to be consistent. You got to put out the content in the beginning. It ain't really going to catch on. But after a period of time, it will start to catch on. You just got to work. You got to be consistent. You got to find out what people are interested in. And, you know, I just knew from being in the storage auction, you know, buying a unit for one dollar and making sixty thousand dollars. Once people start hearing about that, they'd be interested. And I was right. You said the start of services right now, I'm thinking of security and privacy. I sell do doorbell cameras on Facebook and then sell one. Once again, if you're going to sell something like that, you need your own website and you need your and you're going to probably have to run paid traffic. OK. Appreciate that. Yeah, because essentially, let me tell you, I was making money from this YouTube channel before I got monetized. For me, and only in 2000, in 2020, did I really start to pay attention to AdSense. I mean, you know, it, it was just like, all right, I made fifty thousand dollars this month selling courses, and I made like fifteen hundred book dollars in AdSense. Big whoop! I really didn't care. And this year, when I started um, Savage Finance. And literally February to now, because let me show y'all. All right. I just started this channel, right? In February. I've made $21,686 in essentially. I got monetized late April. So April, May, June, July, August, September, November. I've made $21,000 in seven months. So between the two channels, I'm going to make $50,000. This is the most AdSense money I've ever made, ever. And probably once this channel hits the 50,000 subscribers, I'll be doing an easy $10,000, $15,000 a month from AdSense. Easy. Easy. And at this point, this whole thing caught my attention because in my YouTube mastermind, we've got people making a million dollars a month from YouTube doing various things and various deployments and applications. But essentially, my plan is to get my YouTube revenue up to thirty, forty thousand dollars a month. And that's going to cover my salary and that's going to cover the salary of staff and then take all of my course money and reinvest it in real estate. That's the plan. So by May, I should be at thirty to forty thousand a month from YouTube AdSense by May, and at that point, it makes sense because once again, I'm treating this as a business. When I created Savage Finance, I knew that the personal finance space needed a different voice because right now, uh, I'm just going to be honest. A lot of the stuff, the advice they give you is just garbage. It's not going to move you from a financial standpoint, it ain't gonna really change nothing. Like if you're making $33,000 a year or less 
and then you're investing in stock and you're investing in Bitcoin. Uh, big whoop. You don't have enough money to buy enough for the stock or Bitcoin to really make a difference in your life. It's just it's a feel good sentiment. But once again, since I, I'm like I've always treated YouTube as a business. And now that I see that once I grow Savage Finance to where I want to get it, it's going to be making 30, 40,000 a month. Then the online course money is going to go into real estate. So. Oh, I, I didn't even know there was a fight. All right, Terry Henry, appreciate you. <clears throat> Jukebox here are the same principles of prior to trading. This is this is a get rich without knowing what actually goes into trading and the mental toughness you need. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, see. One of the things that so many YouTubers who are on the platform don't understand is how amazingly powerful YouTube is. I mean, they 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 have no clue to how powerful <clears throat> like this time next year. My goal is to be doing 300, 400 K a month this time next year. <clears throat> it is doable. It is possible. But once again, so many people, like I said, and my assistant every day she's reaching out to youtubers and most of them don't respond because they don't understand they don't know what they don't know they don't understand the game they don't know what is required they they fully don't understand what the power of this platform nor do people who are coming online understand the power of an online business because they treat it like a hobby or, you know, I'm just going to because essentially like one of the things I'm doing is I'm watching a lot of YouTube ads and they first they come off. You don't have to change. You don't have to do anything different. This business plan is going to fit into your crummy life just the way it is. You don't have to do anything remarkable. You don't have to do anything outside yourself. You don't have to be uncomfortable and you're going to make X amount of money being the same sad loser that you are. And I'm just like, it ain't true. It's just not true. If I was the same person I was 20 years ago, there would not be a Porsche in that garage. There will not be a brand new BMW X5M that's coming for that, that. That wouldn't be happening. I wouldn't be living in a million dollar house. I would not be eating out every day. I would not like right now. Let me show you all something. Oh, once again. I'm not even spending my paychecks. Because everything corporate corporate expenses cover everything. Because uh, that might be too much information. I ain't gonna show. I ain't gonna show. It. But like right now, I got thirty thousand dollars in my personal checking account, which represents because um, I get twenty thousand a month because I'm paying eleven thousand in taxes, which represents three checks. And it's just stacking up in my personal account because I'm running everything through my corporate expenses. Um, essentially. In a year, that account's going to have two, three hundred K in it. And that's going to be money that's going to have taxes already paid that I can reinvest in the company if I so desire. I mean, YouTube is incredibly powerful. But once again, a lot of folks, most YouTube creators. They don't understand what they're doing. Hit, hit like a milk dud. If I have an offline business, cleaning business, would it be wise to start an online business selling microfiber top? Hit like a milk dud. This is what I want you to do. I want you to do this right now. Go to YouTube and Google cleaning videos. It will blow your mind. 
And the girl did exactly what you're talking about from her cleaning channel. And she's going to make $5 million selling microfiber tiles clops. Go to YouTube and Google cleaning videos. Head like a milk dud. What you should do is enroll in my YouTube course and you should start a YouTube video showing people cleaning. I just gave you a million dollar idea right there, because if you go ahead and create a, you know, and just go ahead and say, hey, this is me. This is my cleaning company and this is my team and film them cleaning and speed it up and put it on YouTube and you will get YouTube money. Then you will be able to sell your microfiber tiles and clops and you got your cleaning company. So you got YouTube money. You got money from your e-commerce and you got your cleaning company. Three revenue streams right there, bro. Or sis, three revenue streams. Terrell Bennett, many, this is one of the reasons because the average person is not going to be good at trading. The average person just doesn't have the mentality for it. This info is more exciting than tequila talk and Lambo. Me and my Lambo bros, me and my Lambo. I'm like, once again, that's just stunt YouTube. It, it works because people like to see that stuff. One of the reasons I got the Porsche and one of the reasons I got the new cars because I'm going to start stunting a little bit, stunting a little bit. But also, I'm going to keep it real because once again, I actually tell you how to start a business and make money. I don't give you this inspirational stuff that people like to see because they broke. Uh, Valerie Lamb, once again, it isn't Shopify. OK, Valerie Lamb, listen to me and listen to me. Well, Shopify is just a tool. You still have to drive traffic to the website. You can build your own website using WordPress. And see, here's the real business skill. It is not Shopify. Shopify is easy. Shopify is a great functionality in terms of website and it hooks up and everything. But your real skill for you to make money is your ability to market and get traffic to your website. That's the ticket. So, you know, Shopify is good. WordPress is good. If you can get traffic, like, let me give you an example. I built my WordPress site, Urban Pack Rat, myself. Let me go back to the Wayback Time Machine. Let me see if I can find this. All right. Let's go to. Oh man, it ain't, it's no longer in the urban. It's no longer in the internet. It's been so, it's been gone so long. Because I was going to show you, I built my urbanpackrat.com off WordPress, and that website got to seven figures. It wasn't, quote, the website, it was the ability to get traffic to the website. So that's what you need to be focused on. How am I going to get traffic to my website? Am I going to do it organically with a YouTube channel, um, an a Instagram page or a Facebook group, or I'm going to run paid traffic? That's the ticket. You got to get traffic to wherever it is. That's, that's what makes the money, getting that traffic. Man, rock and roll. I, you, you know that typo? You know how much money that typo has cost me? Zero. See, this is another thing, and I'm not picking on you. You perfectionist people, y'all are scared to make money. I don't care about no typo. I don't care about no typo. They're like, oh, he, he's unprofessional. Dude, I'm making 200K a month with typos on my page. Hello? Hello? Take action. <laughs> the 
The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. Your life won't change if you won't change pretty much, pretty much. Tell folks that, man, uh, I'm getting ready to redo some with my mail channel. I haven't posted on it this month. Uh, you know, once again, you got to know your market. All right, head like a milk dud. G Smalls, you got to actually get started. You got to start marketing. I don't know what you're doing. See, this is one of the things. A lot of y'all ask me these general questions like, I need marketing advice. What are you doing? What are you selling? Who's your audience? These are things that you need to know so I can give you better advice because I'm just like, all right. Thank you, head like a milk dud. Thank you for the $10 super chat. Yeah, YouTube is amazing, man. All right. Thank you, the beauty, for the five dollar super chat. Yeah, Candace, the, you know, look, 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 the platforms. Now, if you're going to do Squarespace, BigCommerce, and all this other stuff, you're going to need to still drive traffic because you know they're just going to take the hosting duties or whatever you're doing. But the, the real key is, like I just showed you, like as someone pointed out, I got a typo on Savage Finance. That typo has not created one problem for me making money. No, Terrell. Nope. I just built my own site from scratch. That's the easy part. Getting traffic is a lot harder, but it's literally the thing you just need to spend most of your time on. Pretty much. Pretty much. Pretty much. Audience research is everything. <laughs> oh, Kevin Samuels in the high value, man. You know, it, it's kind of funny what's going on with that. People trying to be in business but don't know their audience. They don't know when the Jordan, but they know when the Jordans came out. So many audiences don't know their own. This is one of the things. So many people would take this cup and buy this cup and then go out and try to sell this cup and not know who they're selling it to, not know who wants it, not know who appreciates it. And then they're like, who cups don't sell? But yet he's a $600 billion company. Hey, I don't even worry about it. Yep, YouTube is the ticket. I think YouTube is uh, any advice for marketing in the Rada book. You need to take it off Gumroad and you need to put it on Amazon. See, this is one of the things. This is why you need to do audience research. Erotica is a part of romance, and romance is the largest literary uh, category in writing. Romance. Uh, erotica is a subcategory. The audience is already on Amazon. You need to put your book on Amazon. The audience is already there. Yeah, the audience is everything. Wolf mugs, wolf mugs. I think Alex Becker, because Alex Becker has gotten really, um, I think he just got tired of doing what he was doing. He He's just gotten kind of weird. Oh, man, I used to sell used panties. You can sell anything, man. There's so many levels to the game. Getting traffic is one thing. Writing sales copies is another. No copy, no money. Pretty much, pretty much, pretty much. If you give me 45 seconds. All right. All right. Yeah, because see, th this is the truth. So many people don't understand business. Like all of these girls are running the only fans. The average chick makes like 200 bucks a month. Now, if this chick would start a service business and clean houses, she would go from 200 bucks a month to about three to four thousand a month, zero to a hundred real quick. But once again, everybody trying to make money the lazy way. 
They're trying to make money the lazy way. Because I'm here to tell you, you can't start an online business. But starting an online business is going to be dramatically harder than starting an e-commerce business or starting a service business. Now, this is where the game gets beautiful. If you start an e-commerce business or a service business, you're going to learn business skills that are transferable to something else. Like many people love to ask me this question. What would you do if you had to start all over, Glendon? Here's the thing. I got 20 years of business experience, 20 years of sales experience, 20 years of marketing experience. I'm never going to start over. Do you understand what I just said? I'm never going to start over. I'm never going to be broke. I'm never going to be scrapped. I'm never going to go back to where you are. It's not going to happen. Once you get to a certain level, you just keep making moves. If YouTube said, Glendon Cameron, we don't like you. Guess what? I would start a service business. I got a lot of capital. I would start a cleaning service. Honestly, I've been thinking about starting a cleaning service or something else anyway. Because I got the skills. I got staff. I got money. There's so many businesses that once you get business skills, you can start. I will never, ever start from scratch. The Porsche is paid for. I'm not going to lose the Porsche. The BMW is paid for. I'm not going to lose the BMW. I got enough money in the bank to pay off the house. I'm not going to lose the house. I'm never, ever going to start from scratch again. And that's what people, well, go ahead, give me these jewels. If I was starting over today, what would I do? I'm not you. I'm not you. It's just like these conversations are so pointless because people are grasping for simple solutions to complex problems. If you've been broke for 20 years, that's a complex problem. You're not going to solve it. it ain't going to be solved like that. All right, Valerie, appreciate that. Hey, fetishes pay extremely well, man. No, I don't have any ebook writing courses. Cleaning and sanitation. Yeah, you can't. It's hard to get Lysol. Uh, Google that. Alex Banker wants to build his massive great company like Zappo, but realize selling to the money making community. Rest in peace, <laughs> Zappo creator. Hey, man. Hey, see, that's what I'm saying. A service business can make you a lot of money real quick. Really, really quickly. Mac Ultra, if they spent the time they do projecting, maybe they'd be... See, one of the things is, because, you know, thank you for all the good people who are watching this live stream, who are leaving them positive comments. I appreciate you folks. Uh, these feminine men, see, a lot of these men, I grew up in an era where we got hit. You know, if you hit on a bigger kid, he beat your butt. So we realized there was something called consequences. You got a lot of these little feminine men who were raised by a single mother out here who are jealous. Because I, I had someone over there, oh, I don't believe you bought Bitcoin. I, you probably don't believe that I bought a storage unit for a dollar and made $60,000. You probably don't believe that I was making, you know, me and my partner was making like three hundred k a month in the storage. You probably don't believe that. You don't believe that because you haven't been able to do it because you can't figure it out. <laughs> if he's sorry i think alex is going through a midlife crisis i really do hey man christmas is gonna be off the chain uh, once again i'm gonna be creating more comments i keep telling folks there are state contracts about all you need is an llc they don't want to do the work case coaching they don't want to do the work they don't want to do the work I've been running my electrical service business for over 20 years, and 2020 has been one of my best years ever. In 2021, I'm turning my offline experience into an online gold mine. See that? See that? 
That's what I'm talking about. Service business, service business. Yeah, they want everything to be equal. They want everything to be equal. But I'm here to tell you, um, starting an online business is going to require that you treat it the same as you treated an offline business. You got to find customers. You got to market it. You got to brand it. You got to run traffic. You, you, you got to do all these things. And this is why so many people fail because they think that this is something they can do in their part time. That's one of the things that drives me crazy. Like, oh, you, you don't have like, OK, you broke. You have no money, but you don't have the time to devote to a full time endeavor. Really? Really? Once again, all of these marketing ads that appeal to people's do nothing lazy side drive me insane because I know the truth. If you were to sit down and apply yourself. Really, for a year or two, you would see massive change. Just sit down, focus, work. You will see massive change. Oh, really? I did not know that. That's that's sad, Erica. Uh, Antonio Williams, you can turn that lawn service into a multi-million dollar business. I know, man. Alex has gotten weird as crazy. Pretty much, Jukebox Hero. Pretty much. Uh, it was transcendental meditation. I'm going to get into, like, uh, for you people in the corporate toolbox, I'm getting ready to do something that's called Wealth Habits. Because one of the things I consistently see online is miseducation and erroneous information talking about how to get money. First of all, you got to do something. Just, you know, like this ad, like Jim, he, he travels and he runs this business part time. He makes 60000 a month. I would need to see bank statements. I need to see the auditing on that because I'm, I'm not simply believing it. Because one of the things that people are being sold is that they can create these high income businesses doing little or nothing. And I know that to be fundamentally untrue. I know that to be crazily inherently true. And one of the things I want to do is bring a level of sensibility to the internet to give people the proper tools. Like, you know, Omni and Hellcat, people went crazy about him. He never actually put out until he got pressed what he did and how, what a, I had a consultant client that wanted to do the same thing and he was afraid to scale it up because it's such a gray area. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so once again, you know, here's the whole deal about starting an online business. You got to start it like it's a real business. You got to treat it with precision. You've got to be treating it with care. You've, you've got to do something different, but you can win online. I'm here to tell you, you know, with 20 years of experience selling stuff online and 11 years of selling stuff from my own website. I, I'm here to tell you, you can do it, but it's not going to be quick. It's not going to be easy, but it's going to be worthwhile because I, I'm here to tell you that the scalability of online sales is insane. This is one of the things that makes online businesses so remarkably different than physical businesses. Like say you had a lawn service and you wanted to scale, you would have to buy more trucks, more lawnmowers with an online business. You can scale instantly. You know, my website is built to take a million hits a month. So the scaling isn't that bad. It isn't that hard. Once again, uh, Joshua Danridge, how do you feel about buying an online business instead of building them, especially have some experience? If you buy an online business and you don't know how to run that business, you wasted your money. Because there's a reason that that business is for sale. People rarely get rid of really good businesses. They're selling it because they're sick of it. They're tired of the headaches. There's a reason that they're selling it or they built it to sell. So you can buy an online business, but if you don't know how to run it, you just wasted your money. I really.
really not a hater. Like, I don't really know everything that's out there. I feel that there's some pretty good creators that have created some amazing courses, and there's some creators that have created garbage. But I really am not in that space, so I don't really know. Okay, coaching. Yeah, you build a business from scratch. You know, it's your baby, man. It's your baby. All right, all right, all right. All right, so for those of you who are interested, if you buy one and done, this is going until December 1st, you get a year of coaching if you do the corporate toolbox one and done deal. That's the only way I'm doing that. Like if you're on the payment plan, you're not getting the year of coaching. If you buy the top three, uh, top three, to, well, you buy the first tier, one and done, you get a year of coaching. Then you buy the other two, you get two consults. And that's going to be the two times $2,500 per month payment option or the three times $1,500 a month payment option. So that's the Black Friday enhancement that's going on. I'm getting ready to create some more stuff, put it out there for you guys. Thank you. Enjoy your weekend. I've enjoyed this. This has been good. I'm going to be doing more of these. So I will see you guys in the next one.